Morning everybody, Nick from Meat Smoke Fire here and it's not raining yet, 20 minutes. Anyway, um, so we've shuffled things around a bit because of the forecast. So what we thought we'd do today is, I'll move out a bit. Andy, we've got an, an umbrella for Andy. Let me just show you what's going on. <laughs> Look. Yay. An umbrella. <laughs> We're ready, should it happen. Helena, on the other hand, is out in the horribleness. She's doing the Instagram stuff. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, here's Andy. Um, so those are helping mamas indoors. Um, she's come out, she's, she's getting into a habit of coming every weekend. Um, she likes all the food. So uh, she's indoors waiting for today's cook. So today we thought we'd mix it up a little bit. Uh, we will do the cake, because today is our 30th live event of 2020, this wonderful year. Um, so we've done a cake, we've got one on and we're going to do another one. Um, reminds me, my egg over here is a little bit hot, so I'll just turn it down, uh, we'll get to that. Uh, and um, we thought, because somebody asked, and I can't remember, I should have looked up who it was, but we've been asked several times, can you do a whole roast dinner on an egg? So we're going to do it. How about that? Right, so on this beautiful egg here, we've got it set up. This is going to be our roast dinner egg. I'm going to show you a few things on that. On the egg in the corner, we have our German apple cake that we cooked last week. It was fabulous. So we are going to cook that. We've got one in there already cooking, so I won't open it yet. Maybe I will. Should we have a little look? It's at 180 degrees roughly. Oh, that needs a bit more yet. So uh, that's probably another 20, 30 minutes. So we've got that in there cooking away at 180. I've got the Egg Genius doing that. Um, I should talk about that. That's a, it's a um, forced air controller. Basically, it's a little fan unit that blows air in. Um, you restrict the air flowing out the top, so it's forcing the exact amount of air in there to hold the temperature. And when I'm cooking cakes, I always use it because, let me just show you, it's got a little probe here hooked up to the grid so we know that part of the grid is exactly 180 degrees. And the point of that is we can control the temperature to the degree almost. Uh, makes it much easier. I know uh, Mary um, did one of our, uh, our Christmas cake on her egg and burnt the bottom. Um, and I'm, I guess it's because it was, it was uh, a little bit too hot. The other thing you'll notice when you're doing this is that that is set at 180 and on here it's reading about 160. And that is because there is a difference in temperature through your egg. Um, so go with the genius in that, in that um, instance. Um, and exactly the same um, we've got on this one. This one's reading uh, just over 160. But the thermometer at the top is, I've got a thing over here, I'll show you. It's exactly the same reading. Uh, we're using the meter in the chicken that we've got in there. It's showing 180, 181 it's just gone to. Um, so you'll get a slight difference in temperature between the two. Don't panic about it. Go with which one you feel right using. Um, I've, you know, this, um, because the chicken is right at the top and the air, all that hot air's got flowing past the chicken. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, I'm happy that the chicken is reading 180 as opposed to everything further down. Does that make sense? Anyway, um, if not, ask questions. Helena will start asking me those questions. So Sue Stoneman has said cooking cakes is really good in the ceramics. They just cook longer at a slightly lower temperature. Yeah. So um, exactly um, sort of what I've just said, but Sue Stoneman, who is a cake cake baking god, um, she's a cooking god essentially. She's uh, as I've said before, um, uh, uh, Southwest Home Cook of the Year two years on the trot, I believe. Um, she said cook them longer and lower um, in a ceramic. Uh, and you'll be fine. So, um, so just a little bit lower in temperature, just a bit longer, and you're not going to burn the bottom. On that egg, I'm using a convector with the feet pointing up. I've got a stainless steel grid across, and then I've got a baking stone on there, and the baking stone is to protect the bottom of the cake. I've seen some people do it with upturned, and I think Sue's one of them does it with an upturned um, baking tray or uh, tin. Um, just to protect it, um, but I find just putting it directly on the, the, the stone works perfectly. Right, let's have a look at this egg um, and we'll show you what we're going to do. Now this is going to be a bit different, um, so let's have a look. So I'm using the expander system in here. 
you'll see we've got our chicken on the top just a salt and pepper on there underneath i've got my potatoes i've got my carrots and my parsnips and any juices from my chicken are going to drip down and flavor those it's going to be delicious and then underneath that i have got and this is difficult to see but i'm going to take it all out in a second uh, and again this is the beauty of the expander system it makes this doing this easier but i'm going to just lift this whole thing out I'm going to pop it over here on something heat proof. I'll close the lid for now so it doesn't get too hot. And we have a tray under here with oil in it. And I'm going to make some Yorkshires. So let me just give it a little stir, stir it back up. Uh, it's just a standard Yorkshire batter. If you don't know about one, Helena will type it up the recipe away. Um, I'm just going to put some of that in. I'm going to put it into eight of these now by putting this in now it means um, uh, we're not going to be able to open the egg for a little bit so what I'm going to do with these uh, put them back onto the I've got them directly on the baking on the convector underneath but if I leave them sitting on the convector and that's going to be cooking those nicely now if I leave that sitting on the convector, it's gonna burn the bottoms. So what I want to do, and I've got three of them here, here's a fourth, little bits of foil, and carefully, I'm gonna stick these under just to lift that tray off the, um, off the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the convector. So, uh, Helena's iPad's blown over, if you're wondering what that mm. is, just gonna lift these up a little bit. I've not tried this before, so um, that's lifting it slightly there. I'm going to swizzle it round. It's only a tiny bit, but I just don't want it to be touching it because it will um, burn the bottoms. So I'm going to lift it up here, get one of these in either side. This is a fiddly bit. And that is now just off the surface and hopefully that'll be enough that I don't burn the bottom of these. Um, there's a guy called Callum, who is the um, Callum Slate, uh, Callum, yeah, Callum Slate. Um, is the Yorkshire King. Um, so he will do that. If you want to know how to do Yorkshire, I suggest you ask him. But we're gonna give it a go like that. So there's a whole roast dinner using the convector We've got the Yorkshire's underneath. We've got a cast iron skillet in there with our roasties in. And if I uh, grab a pair of tongs, I'll just come around the back of you, Andy. Grab a pair of tongs. You'll be able to see if I slide that back for a minute. Just so I can get in here. They're crisping up nicely on the bottom. I've got them in here. I've um, sat in some beef dripping. Um, how decadent is that? So we'll just flip a couple of those. I'll worry about the rest later. Um, they're still crisp up nicely. Oh, they're nice, look at those. Mm. Some nice color on them. Right, and we'll pull that back and um, shut the lid. Now, my chicken does clear the dome. It's not touching the dome. And that's it, it's all going in now. And we're gonna leave it at least 30 minutes now for those Yorkshires to come up. I'll open the lid a tiny bit. I want it to be about 180 and we'll leave it about 30 minutes and they'll puff right up. Okay, so any questions no, on that? I've got big news. Big news. Steve doesn't have a hangover this morning. Blimey, Steve <laughs> doesn't have a hangover this morning. And it was his wife's birthday yesterday. So, oh, really? Yeah, so Sandra, happy birthday um, for yesterday. Um, no hangover, that's incredible, um, but brilliant. Right, so that is all gonna sit in there. I can't believe the way these things go. Um, but um, that's all going to sit in there for about half an hour. Our cake is cooking in there nicely. So what we're going to do is we've got two other things to do. We've got, I've got the mini, I fired up the mini this morning. Um, I thought it's a while since we've looked at any of the smaller eggs and used the smaller eggs. We're always using these big ones. Um, but I just wanted to show you that these little ones, and I know you can't get this one anymore, but we're going to use the mini max in a second. These little eggs are brilliant. Great Christmas presents as well. Um, all big news on that. Um, between now and Christmas, any egg you buy um, comes with a free plate setter from me. Um, Big Green Egg don't do that, so 
uh, and I'll do my normal, might discount it a little bit. So um, if you want to buy one of these little ones for somebody for Christmas, they make a cracking present and they'll come with a free convector. So um, anyway, we're going to look in this one. I can see Helen wants to ask a question. Go for it. Uh, Perfect question. So I put them on about half an hour before this cook so that we stood a chance of getting some stuff cooked while it's in there. But I just wanted to show you that setup. So they went in half an hour before. The cake went in three quarters of an hour before because it takes about an hour. It looks like it's going to take about an hour and 15. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Right, Mini. Got this beautiful little Mini in Mini Mac. Uh, it's not the Mini Mac, this is the Mini got a cast iron thing and I've been neglecting these they're probably a little bit oh no and I just thought just to show you can chuck on just a few little things now what we've done while they're cooking um, I'll put some others on just to, there's a bit of space in here now these and we'll come back to it are rubbed with the brand new to the UK um, that I've just started selling um, let's Q barbecue rubs um, so I put a competition up yesterday on the Insta on the Instagram page. So if you want to win four of them, all four flavours for you and all four flavours for a friend, just um, put the friend tag the friend. Both like my Instagram, and we'll pick a winner next Saturday. And you, that's eight pack, eight things of rubs. So here they are. So we've got a chicken, we've got an all-purpose, we've got a pork, and we have a beef rub. Um, we're using the chicken now, so I thought I'd show you that. Uh, and what we're gonna do is use the rub just to get some flavor into that chicken, and then, whoop, and it's about to trip over, she <laughs> said she'd do it. Um, we're then gonna use some Angus and Oink um, Red House barbecue sauce, and we're gonna um, glaze them afterwards with that to get a really nice uh, glaze on those, so lovely. Right, let's get this cake. So, what we thought we could, we could have chopped this down a bit. I'll get my knife. It'll melt faster then, won't it? So, um, what we're going to do is make another cake. Let me just grab my knife. So I'm just going to chop this butter up a bit smaller um, because then it will melt faster. But we've got butter in here. There we go. That should help a bit. Um, so, what we're going to use, the Mini Max. So, lump of butter. Um, to that, we're going to add um, some sugar, uh, an egg, and some flour. I'll do that in a minute, but first I've got to melt this. So, um, would help if I put a grid on it. <laughs> or I'm going to have to show the really rusty one now. Don't look at this. So I turn away. I'll, yeah, go, turn I'll, away. I'll pan on to Helena. I meant to get, <laughs> I, I meant to get a lovely... Uh, Lovely stainless steel one, but uh, somebody forgot to right. do that. So I, I, think, I think we got away with yeah. that one. <laughs> Just because of my fans. Um, so we're going to melt that butter down. So Helena, while I'm doing this, any questions, any comments? Who's on? Shout out. Uh, so we have Helen, Helen Lewis, 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 Helen Morning, Carlos. Morning, Chubby. Carlos is, uh, we have got a little sweepstake going on with the Masters Golf and he's beating me. Uh, Mary's on. Mary's on, Karen. so I just mentioned, uh, mentioned the cake. Morning, Karen. Uh, and uh, Ben Slater and Dean and... Oh, hang on, Mum's... Go on, push. Uh, no, no, no. No, no. Oh, no. We're having technical difficulties with a door. <laughs> What's she saying? Oh, <laughs> oh bless her. <laughs> I thought we got a technical difficulty because she was trying to come out. But no, we're just up to 50 people watching and she wanted to let us know. Brilliant. Oh, well. So we've got all sorts of people on this morning. So if there's a shout out you want for a friend or who's on, just Ooh. say, um, Nikki. Montero. Morning, Nikki Montero. Carlos's wife is on. Not playing golf. I don't blame you. It's pretty. I oh, know you can't play golf. Not allowed to go out, are we? So, um, yeah. Right, let's see how, good, how our melt's going. It's probably not that fast. Oh, Cake timer. Right, so Andy, just starting to melt down. Right, we'll have a look at another, another look at our cake in a second. Because that is gonna take about two or three minutes. Mrs. Scott's on as well. Oh, morning Sarah, is she hungover? And I don't know, she hasn't oh. commented, I don't think. 
Oh, a little bit more on this. Just give me another 10 minutes, 10, 15. So, um, so let's go back to our chicken while that's melting and I'm gonna glaze the first three bits. So we've got the bits we were cooking over there already. I'm gonna flip them over. Get my thermo pen in a minute, which is somewhere out here. Right here, right, right here, here, right, right here. Me. I knew where to put it. <gasps> Sarah says, no, rude. <laughs> so look, our chicken is above 74. 76 so it's, it's cooked so what we now now want to do and this is a, a key tip um don't ever put barbecue sauces on your food until right at the end of the cook because they will burn really easily they, oh, they contain lots of sugar and the sugar burns so glaze them right at the end and you won't burn it i've lost a bit of skin off that one so we'll put a bit of glaze on we'll let that set so this is this is um quite a buttery one i think so it gives a lovely shine to it. I'm just keeping the cooked ones one side and the uncooked the other. And then obviously using two different sets of tongs, not. Um, but yeah, we'll give those another five minutes now. Right, back. So, a couple of questions. Yeah. Can you talk about the handles? Can I talk about the saucepan with the removable handles? Of course I can. Um, they're linked on my website. If you go to advice or whatever it is, there's a page that says uh, essentials, my barbecue essentials. And these are t Fowl Ingenio um, and they are epic. Um, so you can see we're starting to melt that butter down nicely now. A tiny bit more. Um, but yeah, they're very good. So these are the stainless steel ones. Um, I have used, they do do a cheaper set. Um, I'd advise you to go with stainless steel. They're a lot more expensive, but they are bulletproof. These are almost 10 years old now. Um, we use them, um, they live in our camper van, go everywhere when we're camping. So we take those with us um, and they are some stainless steel, <coughs> excuse me, stainless steel um, saucepans as well that are non-stick that come with them. So they come as a set of five, I think. But yeah, t -fowl, brilliant. <coughs> Can you tell me what the mini max is? The mini max is about 180 uh, ish. Uh, this thermometer is way out because <laughs> uh, it hasn't been used for ages. So uh, I'm just winging it. Oh, um, we? This, so, is, this is how to do your 30th, isn't it? We are so. We got up late this morning. The weather was looking a bit rubbish. Yeah, anyway. We've got people keep joining all the time. Okay, little rundown again, because people have joined um, since we started. In this egg, sat at roughly 180 degrees um, using this bad boy. It's actually gone down a bit, so we'll turn it up. Um, in this egg, we have, um, I'm using a meter, the meter block. It's sitting down here. We've got one of the probes in our chicken, and that tells us that um, our chicken is currently at 57 degrees. Uh, our target temperature for chicken is 74 degrees. That's when a chicken's cooked, not an hour and a quarter in or an hour and a half. It's, it's when it's at 74, it's ready. And it's showing that our egg is at 172 degrees at the moment, because I just locked it down a bit. So we'll open it up. We want it about 180. Um, so in this egg, and I'm not gonna open it because we've just put Yorkshire puddings in there and hopefully they're gonna rise. And if they don't, I'm not showing you. Um, but um, we've got York's puddings on the bottom, just above the plate setter or the convector. On the next row uh, level up, we have a cast, the big green egg, large cast iron skillet, and that's got our roast potatoes, our roast parsnips and our roast carrots. And then above it, right at this level up here, we've got a um, chicken roasting, and that's what the, the meter is plug, um, pushed into. We've got a roast chicken sitting at the top. Um, so that is our full roast dinner. Yes. Um, so the question was, with the Egg Genius, do you always clip the pit probe onto the uh, grill or put it onto the dome thermometer? I always put it on the grill, it doesn't move. A um, lot simpler. If you keep open, open and closing the lid with the, the, the wire on, you're going to pull something out. So, uh, so yeah, always. For me, oh lovely. Right, we'll go back over there. Our butter is melted. Right, so this is how we make this cake. So we're gonna take our butter. To that, we are going to sugar. sugar. I know Mrs. Meat Smoke Fire is worrying. 
that I don't you know had how a, to... You had a crash course this morning. Yeah, I don't know how to make this cake. She <laughs> taught me about 15 minutes ago. Right, sugar's going in. I'm not going to tell you how much it is because I have no idea. <laughs> I'm going to stir that in and then I'm going to put it back on the egg to melt it. Um, what I don't want to do is turn this into a caramel. Um, so, back in the egg. I'll turn it up just a tad. Um, we'll come back and stir that so keep reminding me. I know what I'm like. Let's have another look at our cake. Keep letting all the hot air out of this one. I know, it's not going to cook. Yeah. Oh, we must get our glazed bits off. So, oh, it's not looking too bad. Starting to brown. Ooh. Oh, you got that? Yeah, I think so. That? Right. Keep letting all the hot air out. Let's go and get these glazed things off. Flip them over. I might do another, yeah, another little bit of glaze on them and then we're good to go. And at least then Mrs. Meeks so about five can sit there eating chicken, getting sicky finger pimps and the keyboard as she answers all your questions. <laughs> Morning, Dan. I've got a bag of pork belly burnt ends from Farmerson. What oh. would you recommend? Pork belly burnt ends from Farmerson. It sounds like they're already sorted. Um, so I'd recommend you cook them. Um, so, um, they're burnt ends, so it's pork belly. Um, you want to get it to up. Put those there, they look lovely. I'm sure um, Helen is going to do. I've never. Uh, so that's just our, chick our, our chicken. Uh, so it's just got one of our rubs on it. It's got our chicken rub, a let's cue chicken rub, and then it's just uh, some barbecue sauce over the top to glaze it. Um, back to the pork belly burnt ends. Um, pork belly burnt ends essentially are little cubes of pork belly that you, um, you bring up, get them nice and hot so that you break down the connective tissue. You want to get them to above 88 degrees C. Um, you put them then in a cast iron pan and you mix them with lots of barbecue sauce, uh, lots of barbecue rub on them. Um, stir them up and essentially burn them, burn the barbecue sauce, and they become these little cubes of sugary deliciousness. deliciousness. Yeah, talking yeah. of that, yeah. talking of yeah. sugary, sugary delicious. deliciousness. Yeah, it won't be, it's not hot this egg, not too hot. So, it's not far off. A bit more. Oh, joy. Yeah, Speaking here's the rain. rain. <laughs> Here comes the rain. 12 o'clock, I said, 11.53. Gonna absolutely lash it down in seven minutes. Right, a little bit more on that one. Turn it up again. Sorry, I put this, I put the regulator on the top today, but I haven't got any gasket on, so it's a bit wobbly. I need to put a bit of gasket around it. Um, so pork belly burnt ends, yeah, they're little cubes, they are delicious. We don't do them very often because they're really um, sticky and yeah, not very good for you. But right, any other questions, Helena? Come on, ask questions. We've got lots of things not happening oh, well, at the moment. Uh, uh, from Newcastle, oh. Thank you, Mark. So Mark, smoke fine food. Um, follow him on Insta. Follow him on, uh, well, on Facebook, on his website. Um, great recipes. Um, Mark has just said he did wonder where the rain was. Well, it's coming. Um, as forecast, every Saturday between 11:30 and 12, it rains in Cambridge, um, or it seems to. Um, it hasn't rained all week, it feels like, and then always on Saturday. So, right, let's stir this again. Oh, Christmas page, yeah. So, while we're doing this, so you can see in here our sugar is melting nicely. Um, so, we're put, putting up a page on the website, we'll publish it hopefully later today, and it'll have Christmas gift ideas on it. So, um, books that we love so we picked up a new a new book this week I haven't got out here um, all about um, Greek cooking because we had somebody who asked for Turkish so I bought a Greek book as you do uh, <laughs> it's as good and, as my geography and, and gets really good who have I got for the masters in the sweepy uh, I don't actually follow golf much because we don't well I play a lot but I don't really follow it. So um, I don't know who's any good. So I just went with Woods. So I've got Tiger Woods. I think Carlos has got um, Ram, and Mike, my other friend that we play golf with has got, don't even know who without looking. I might be, he, whoever's nearly leading. So I'm currently in third place. So yeah, which means I'm gonna have to pay out because I don't know much about golf, but anyway, just the way it is. So 
Thanks for that, Alex. Right, I'm going to say this is done enough. My cake guru is just going to have to go with it. <laughs> right, so we're going to put into this now flour. So it's going to make a sort of a roux. So the flour's gone in and we're just going to mix it all in. Hopefully you can see that going in. Maybe it needs to be a bit hotter, but no, that's looking all right, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's starting to, now it's starting to come together. Can you see? Um, it's starting to cook the flour. Now this is a really wet dough cake, quite different. So we've got that in and then we're gonna crack in an egg. So hopefully it won't scramble. And this is gonna be the dough for our cake. So it's a really, uh, and we're putting a bit of water in as well from the sky. So it's a bit like, um, if you've ever made, um, and do look them up on my site, um, churros, Spanish donuts. It's a bit like, um, this dough is a bit like that. Can you see it's like a, a nice silky, it's not like normal cake mixture. There we go. Have we got the tin? Mrs. Meek smoke fire? She's not on it because she's she said when we start mixing it she'll go get the cake tin and she hasn't. Just embarrassed her. Right, so that's our mixture. Now we're going to use half of this for the bottom and half for the top. And we're going to just do this by um, hand. So here she comes. So she set me up today with a cake that's got really um, light. Um, so we just, just a small cake tin. Um, if you're gonna make, uh, you've got to have a cake tin this size. Don't go any bigger um, because there won't be enough um, ingredients. So we're gonna pour that in. I'm gonna guess that is about half. And then you just start spreading it out. Now, there is a, a great technique to spread it out. It's a bit more, I think. Great technique to spread it out, and these are our apples. I'm going to use all of these. No, half. Half, six. half, half, half. I know. <laughs> they really worry about me, these two. Um, use your apples to push it out to the edge. So push it out. And um, what we're going to do, and Andy will have to zoom in. We're going to use about half of these. You just push this mixture out to the sides. And what we're going to do is build a layer. Sorry if this is going to be a bit dull, but we're going to build a layer of apple around the bottom. You can see how thin this dough is. Um, so we're going to use half of this just to cover it. I'll speed through. It doesn't matter if this one doesn't look that pretty because uh, we've got one cooking. And no doubt this will be leaving my house like everything that's nice does and seems to go to our relatives. No, 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 because it's, <laughs> it's a small cake. In fairness, last weekend, it's a small cake. We made it and we polished it in two days. We polished it off in two days, yeah. so. Right. So that's used roughly half. Then we've got in here, we've got um, muscovado sugar, we've got um, some cinnamon, and we've got some uh, raisins. No, sultanas. sultanas. See, they, they do worry about me. You... Go on, she's probably typing rude comments, but as we, I can tell with a grin on her face. So we're just gonna put a layer of that in the middle. See, I was des destined to be a baker. And then we're gonna put another layer of these on the top same sort of thing so you've got a brown layer in the middle oh, it smells delish um, and I take it our lemon juice is in the bottom of this yeah. thing you didn't give me any more yeah yeah we've had these sitting in lemon juice now normally you pour on lemon juice um, but we've had we put the apples in so they don't go brown um, sharp knives uh, yeah <laughs> Yeah, be careful with sharp knives. I don't know if you can see it. Oh no, we don't, we don't need to show anyone. <laughs> After Carlos cut himself the other day, I went and did exactly the same. I went doing that and I chopped down in my nail. I've got a little V shape and the nail's still on, but it went through the nail, so it was sharp. Right. Um, now this, dollop it around. 
you don't want it all in one place because you're trying to cover these apples. Now it doesn't cover it completely. I think Lexi's making you some cupcakes, by the way, who's a oh. trade-off. Brilliant, Lexi. Lexi, my niece, who you saw two weeks ago when it really rained and we had to stop. We're doing all right today, it hasn't rained. It's not. Um, brilliant, send some cupcakes over. I suppose they'll... No, I'm gonna check it in a second. Just gonna finish this. It's not gonna burn, we've got the egg nice and controlled. Right, now what you're supposed to do, and this is the difficult bit, and she's not giving me a spoon like she did indoors. Can you grab me a spoon? Um, is push this out to the outsides, push it so it's covering those apples, covering the top. And I might have put a little bit too much on the bottom by the looks of things. <laughs> no, we're fine. Just going to get the last of this mixture out. Just can't get the staff around here, that's the trouble. You're ballsy when she's <laughs> not here. Fish comes. Right, and then I've kept six or seven bits back just for the top and we'll put them on the top of the cake. Thank you, and she's given me a spoon with some water to stop it sticking. So I'm just gonna use the spoon just to push it around, make sure it's all the way around the cake. Oops. That doesn't look too bad. Get the last off this spoon. I'm gonna call that as a good cake. <laughs> It's a Williams cake. And then we're just gonna put some bits on the top that haven't got cake mixture on. Fan them out. And they'll brown up beautifully. And it will turn out and it will look like that bad boy. Oh, that's looking good. That is looking good, but I'm still gonna cook it a bit more. I'm just gonna grab my thermopen. Yeah, I'll use a thermopen. Um, Good technique with a thermopen is when you go into the middle of the cake, one, it, you can see if it sticks, which it's not, but two, you get an idea of what the temperature of the middle is. And 88, I'd say 90 to 95 degrees is a good, a good temperature for the cake. So I'm going to give it another five minutes. Let's have a look at those last bits of chicken. And we'll flip those over. Just to show you the Mini Max, or the Mini, this is, they're great little bits of kit. Well, that's plenty for two people for a, a dinner. Um, so yeah, people often ask, you know, what are these little, smaller eggs, you know, how good are they? They're awesome. I mean, a lot of people who've, who've got the large um, will buy the Mini Max, the one behind us, um, and they'll and use it more often than they use the large. Um, so, you know, have a look at them. They're brilliant bits of kit. Right. Uh, what have we got left to do? Shall we have a look? Mm. How long has it been in? Not long enough. Not long enough? No. You think they'll collapse? Yeah. Shall we have a quick look? No. Come on. No. We, we're at three minutes past, Andy. <sighs> okay, go on then. What temperatures are, are, are just, uh, we'll have a little look. What temperatures are chicken? Because this, this um, apple thing, an apple thing, this, oh, it might have run out. Amazon rubbish. <laughs> Um, I'll use my th thermopen. Um, we'll have a look what, what temperature our chicken's got to. Go on, we're going to do it. Okay. Oh, look at those Yorkshires underneath. Can you see those? Ooh, sure. Looking good. Our oh, chicken needs a tiny little bit more. Yeah, a little bit, little bit more. But look at those roasties. Look at everything in there. It's looking good. Let me just, I'll drag this out of the way quickly. And this is, um, so you can see what's going on with these roasties underneath. Where these Yorkshire's look. They can't, they're puffing up, they're starting to puff ooh, up. Oh, hello. Yeah, it's got a bit of fat in that one. Oh, the chicken's just tripped on it, that's why. Right. Now, personally, I always cook my Yorkshire's in the oven inside. I think it does a great job of it. Um, this is, you know, I, I don't get why you have to cook your whole dinner on one egg. Just cook part of it and then cook the other part inside. It just gives you more space. So I personally wouldn't do this with my, with my Yorkshire's, but 
I'm doing it because that was what people wanted us to do. But I would put my Yorkshires inside, um, you know, use this as a tool to do your best, your, your, the bit that you want the bee signature, so your chicken or your turkey or whatever. Um, do look at the video I posted the other day. We did a, a, a turkey on the Let's Q spit um, and it was epic and I don't like turkey normally. Um, it came out super moist, uh, it was really good. So uh, um, do take a look at that. Right, where are we at? We need to get that cake off, don't we? Should we have a look at it? Do you want to have a look and see if you're happy? <laughs> Come on, Mrs. Meatboat. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> She's the cake queen, so uh, I'm going to get her judgment. Mm. A little bit more? Yeah, it's still a little bit more. Top. Where's okay. the skewer? Ah. Oh, it's coming out clean. Yeah, it's coming out clean. Yeah. I'd say it's done. Okay, let's take it off. Right, we're going to take this one off. We'll put the other one on. So, I'm going to take, the, take this out. That one can come off. This one can go back on. I'll bring this over just so you can see. And you can probably get in there. And it might, maybe a little bit browner on top, but that's nice. Mm -hmm. And it'll have a lovely layer going through it. So we'll bring that over. Yeah, you want to take that in. And ask Mama to sprinkle some sugar on the top. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it needs a bit of um, Demerara sugar sprinkled on the top. Um, don't sprinkle it on before you cook it because it just sinks in and, and disappears. So, uh, top tip there, come all over it. Hey, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we got this last little bit of chicken. Let's see how tension they're at. Getting up there, a little bit more. 72, 72. So I'm going to give them a bit more. And then we'll glaze those. Those, we've got our glaze there. Um, I'll roast dinner in there. I'll give you a final look because I think it, there's not a lot else we can show you now. So unless there's loads of questions, um, but last look at our roast dinner. Look at those potatoes. Look at those. I mean, the roast parsnips, all of that. The chicken looks lush. Um, our Yorkshires are puffing up, but need to brown on the top a little bit more. Um, but I'd say pretty good. Now that's using the expander system. If you haven't got that, it just gives you those ex those layers. That's the five piece expander. And in the bottom, I've just got a normal convector. So it's just got a normal plate setter sitting in the, in the bottom. Um, but yeah, the five piece expander is great because you've got those handles on the side. And as you saw, you can lift the whole lot in and out. It, um, I've bought it for all of the eggs, all of the, the three large and the extra large here. Um, Cause it, it, you know, it really works, works nicely. The other thing I really like in the eggs is the stainless steel fire bowls. All of these eggs, including the Minimax, have got stainless steel fire bowls in them because it improves the airflow. It makes cleaning them so much easier. So, so two question, so, yeah? Two things, uh, shout out to two of our watching the poorly room. Oh yes, oh, did we look up? Uh, yeah, we've got, I won't name them, but we've got a couple of uh, our uh, regulars who um, unfortunately have contracted, or one of them has, and the other one probably has, contact contracted COVID this week so I um, hope you get better soon um, yeah and then the other thing was oh yes and a shout out to Hurler of the Cambridge food tour um, if you're ever in Cambridge do look Hurler up do look up the Cambridge food tour it's awesome she basically spends and it's, it's well it depends on the tour you take but we did one and it's pretty much six hours trekking around Cambridge going to all of these different places, different types of food, uh, restaurants, pubs. Um, she does a gin tour, I think. Um, does all sorts of different, uh, they are epic tours. But she um, wrote an article uh, for the uh, local um, East Life, I think it's called, uh, magazine, uh, all about um, uh, what uh, cooking classes and cooking demonstrations in lockdown. And we got a mention in there, so thank you, Herla. So, uh, um, yeah, uh, so two more Helen is saying. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, so, uh, is it better to get the expander before the Let's queue? Is it better to get the expander before the Let's queue? Um, they're totally different beasts. Um, I would say... Uh, there's two of you, put each cook, put, put one on the Christmas list. Yeah, if, yeah that, exactly. I like the way Helen's saying. If there's two of you, put both, you know, put, each put one on the Christmas list. Um, 
I would say the Expander you're going to get more out of than you will the Let's Q, but the Let's Q is epic. Um, I would love to say the Lex Q is the best one because I make more money out of that, but um, no, I'd say buy the Expander first, to be honest. Um, it's just so versatile, brilliant bit of kit. Then buy the Let's Q, um, but there are plenty in stock. We've got 50, 55 delivered yesterday, so there's plenty. Although they, we did ship 13 yesterday. Um, so, um, someone has said their temperature gauge gets water in it. Is that normal? Yes, perfectly normal. Um, temperature gauge get water in them. Um, have a look at that one. I know I said this one's miles out, but look, all all, all uh, steamed up. Um, you'll see droplets inside. It's perfectly normal. They're open to the air at the back. It's the way they have to be. So just use your egg a bit more. It'll warm it up and the water will just, excuse me, the water will disappear. So absolutely. Any other questions? Uh, no, I think that's it. Perfect. So we've got lovely chicken here that's going cold but look at the shine on that. that get in there Andy show the beautiful barbecue chicken uh, with the Let's Q rubs on it um, anyone who buys a Let's Q uh, from now on um, I'll chuck a, a little sample of the rub in there um, so hopefully um, so if I remember I packed up 13 yesterday and had to open them all up again um, <laughs> anyway forgot all about it Ooh. Um, so chicken, we've got our roast dinner on here. One last look. That chicken is looking lush. We've got our potatoes and our parsnips and our carrots looking good. Even our Yorkshires aren't looking too bad. They need to brown on top. So I think once I take this pan out, they'll do better. If we'd have put them in um, earlier, they'd have been perfect. Um, you've seen the cake. So um, next week. Okay, so again, we've got a couple of questions. Uh, do you cover your eggs? Do I cover my eggs? No, they live like this. This is how they, I mean, you can see they're a bit of a mess, but I just rub the tables down once a year um, and oil them. Um, but the eggs themselves, they've never been covered. Um, well, that's not true. I had covers for two of them, um, but uh, it's a faff putting them on and off. So no, I'm lazy. I don't cover them. Um, none of them are rusty. None of them get, uh, damaged in any way um, if the only thing I'd say is the tables um, age a bit and the gaskets go a little bit green I think <coughs> if you look at this one around the outside they just get a bit of I don't know if you can see that it's really difficult to see it's got a bit of underbite this one <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me but they go a little bit of mold on them that's all um, but once you fire them up they'll be fine so no I don't bother covering my eggs um, or my tables you use them too often but yeah, yeah, I'm out here practically every day. Uh, we actually cooked a curry inside last night, which is a first. And I can see Andy's getting cold, so <laughs> no, she's sorry. shaking. You get them that on the camera. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, any other questions, Helena? Uh, no, that's the last one, but a couple of people have So do email us with ideas for next week. Um, we've got some venison we do need to cook, so I might do some more videos during the week. What we're planning to do is not do these every week from next year um, we will we'll do more videos um, that can be edited um, of single recipes so they're easier for you to watch because we're aware not many people live you're great but afterward in fact not many people get to the end so they won't see this bit anyway um, <laughs> <laughs> but so we'll do more single recipes and edit them so they're shorter but we will still do one of these every month every two weeks who knows so that's what we're planning um, but yeah, because they've, they've been fantastic this year so far. Next week will be the competition results. So somebody will win those rubs for them and their friends. And go on, Helena was going to say uh, something. So uh, someone says, can we have rain next weekend, Vinfi? Because we're just so used to it. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yeah, um, Requ request for rain next weekend. We don't want that. No. In fact, it's, it's been pretty good. Uh, we put the brolly up. That, that's what we've got to do. Put the brolly up and then it won't rain. Yeah, your gasket will get wet if you leave your egg out in the rain, um, but it will dry. Simple as. And you will have to replace it once every so often. Um, this little one, if you look at it, uh, hasn't been replaced in each ages. It's got moss growing on the side. That's how, but um, it is getting a bit, oh, it's stuck back down. Oh no, there you go. It's, it's coming away a little bit at the back. Um, and that's just normal. That's just what happens after time. But this egg 
is <clears throat> eight years old and hasn't had a new gasket yet. Um, admittedly, I don't use it as much as I use the others, um, but that's eight years. Um, but we, we, we took it camping for years until we bought our first Minimax. Any last requests, questions? No. Oh, have you seen the comment from... Go on, shout it out, Andy. Steve, the barbecue medic, said, been brilliant fun, second only to being there. Mrs. BBQ medic, barbecue medic, has promised me a day with you next year. Oh, brilliant. So, um, yeah, um, on that, cooking classes uh, for next year. Obviously, we in this space with six people, it's really difficult to do with social distancing and it wouldn't be fun. So that's why we're not opened up. I've seen other barbecue schools have reopened and um, I don't believe people are socially distanced for the class. And even if they are, they're not, it's not as interactive as I want it to be. So as soon as this vaccine is out there and we're allowed to drop the social distancing, we will start the classes again. If you want private classes, Julie, who runs her own company but works with me, um, you can get um, email at julie at meatsmokefire.co.uk. Julie is doing private classes, or has been doing, and will take private classes for next year. Um, so if you want to book those with her, you can do that. Um, but we, we expect, once the vaccine's out there, we'll be able to reopen and we will have lots of classes out there. So um, yeah, it'd be lovely to see you all back here um, having fun, because the days are just great fun. We get to open up the windows, we get to uh, all dine together, we all get to cook together, we drink beers and uh, yeah, so if you do do get bought one of those for your Christmas present or something like that, or you know, um, yeah, book a book a and b or something and, uh, uh, and get a taxi. That'd be a lot more fun. Anyway, I can see uh, Andy shaking with the cold. Sorry. She never puts enough clothes on. Rude. Anyway, uh, so next week, uh, same time, same place. We look forward to seeing you. Great stuff. Cheers. Bye.